Good day guys. I wanted to make a video about being conservative or the idea of being conservative in kind of the modern context of the society that we're in today. And basically I want to say that there's a major difference between being conservative on a personal level and supporting politically conservative policies. And this difference is important to me in particular, but people seem to get this confused and they seem to confound these two ideas together and just assume that they're the same. And there have been others that have talked about this as well, but it seems like a lot of people still don't want to accept this. They still don't get the difference here between being personally conservative and being politically conservative. So what do I mean by being personally conservative? Well, we could call these kind of an old school set of Western values, right? Like being honest with people, being straight and direct with people about what you mean, having individual level accountability for the choices that you've made for better or for worse, using reason to solve problems instead of doing things based on feelings or based on this is what I want so I'm going to do it, right? Using reason and sound judgment avoiding reckless activities, which is kind of the other side of the coin of using sound judgment, of using reason, and having a well-established moral compass, knowing what you believe in and living that out in real everyday life instead of virtue signaling, for example, would be kind of the opposite of that. These kinds of things would be what I would consider Western values. These kinds of things are what I would consider personal conservative values. You do things in a way that represents this sort of old school way of thinking and way of doing things. And we find this disappearing in our current society, of course, although that's not really the topic of this video necessarily, but this is becoming more rare to find as society becomes more and more corrupted in a lot of ways as we move away from these kind of core Western values that the United States and other Western countries used to be built on. But these are the types of things that I'm talking about. I'm sure you could put a few other things in there in terms of what old school Western values are, but that's basically what I mean by being personally conservative in this case. Doing things in a rational, well thought out way, being accountable for the mistakes that you do make, being honest and straight up with people, and having a moral compass, a sense of right and wrong. You don't screw people over just to satisfy yourself when there's no good reason to do that. that you are focused on individual accountability and you're focused on your own success, but there are lines that you won't cross just for the sake of your own success. That's the type of thing I'm talking about when I say a conservative person, someone that has basically these old school Western values as much of the bedrock for determining how they do things on a daily basis. What I'm not talking about, and I've made a video about this in the past, are people who are clueless politically, right? People that are personally conservative, but they vote for Joe Biden because they've heard that Trump is bad for all these many years since Trump first got elected president, that type of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I've made a video about that in the past. People that are conservative, but that are politically liberal because they have no idea what it is that they're voting for and what they support, and they watch things like mainstream news programs and they listen to the wrong people basically that rather than thinking for themselves they just go along with the mainstream ideology and so they end up being a politically liberal person even though that goes completely against their own personal lifestyle choices and their own way of doing things on a daily basis right it goes against their own value system but they don't know that because they don't think for themselves that's not what i'm talking about here that's a different type of someone that's personally conservative but politically doesn't know what they're talking about, this is a little bit different. This involves some other elements, right? This involves the concept that the current system politically no longer reflects the values that you believe in if you are a personally conservative person. The system itself no longer facilitates the worldview that you believe in. So ultimately, what are you trying to conserve about the current power structure when the system itself is against your own interests? And what do I mean by that? Well, you can see all the things that go on. You can see how conservatives are vilified 
as the enemy in this society. People that have what I just described as old school Western values are hated by the political establishment and leadership today. And so ultimately, why are you trying to conserve these institutions and these political positions, this political authority, when this authority is just being used against you on an everyday basis, when you're being told that you're basically the problem in society. And you can look at this from a variety of different points of view, but you can look at this from who the establishment has decided are the oppressor classes, right, with their more or less cultural Marxist dichotomy. The oppressor people are white, male, conservative, Christian people that don't support things like LGBTQ. These are the bad people. No matter what they do, good or bad, in actuality, just because they fit into those categories, they are the oppressors. And a lot of conservative people, more or less, although you can consider that a group of oppressors in themselves, they fall into these categories even if they vote for Joe Biden, right? And that's the problem with the other group that I've mentioned before is the useful idiots that are conservative with their lifestyles. They are conservative with the way that they go about things at a personal level, but then they'll support the Democratic Party, for example. These people are making fools of themselves in terms of their political choices, but even if you vote conservative, what are you trying to accomplish? Why are you trying to conserve the system? And that's where you have to remember the kind of original definition, if you want to call it that, of being a conservative. It means that you want to conserve the system. It means that you want to maintain the status quo, that you believe in the institutions and the processes politically, legally, and so forth, that basically determine how this society is run. But when those processes and those institutions are thoroughly corrupted by people that hate you and that have no desire to uphold Western values, when the system itself is already pretty far gone, what is it that you're trying to conserve? And you can look at so many political issues in recent times, whether it's the pandemic, or whether it's feminist-related things, or whether it's any of a number of other topics like gun control. Everybody out there just about wants to basically crap on conservative people, whether they're conservative politically or not, whether they're politically active in any way, even to the extent of whether they even vote or not. These people are seen as bad because you own a gun, or you don't go along with a feminist ideology, or you don't support LGBTQ in terms of what they're doing now. You're labeled as bad anyway. So what is it that you're trying to conserve about any of these elements? What are you trying to conserve with the political establishment or the culture that hates you? What are you trying to actually conserve about that? And why? What purpose is there when these people are hostile toward your interests? Why do you want to maintain the status quo with the way that things are currently going. Even if you want to say, well, we could get Trump back into office instead of Joe Biden, I'm sure that would be a better option. But really, does that change much in the overall grand scheme of things? Does it change where we're really going to head politically? Maybe some would argue that it would, but I'm not really convinced of that. And so when the system, again, itself is against you, what is worth conserving about that system? Now, I will say this, to be fair. There are certain elements that are worth saving, like what remains of the rights expressed in the U.S. Constitution, for example. And Canadians could probably talk about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. But the problem is that it seems like it's only a matter of time before what's left of these institutions, of these bedrock, not just documents, but the way that our entire legal system is supposed to be based on, it's only a matter of time before all of this is destroyed and undermined by the leadership and by the political establishment as well. Our rights are going to be taken away. And can the current system then be reformed enough to preserve what remains of these institutions, of things like the Constitution in the United States? Is there enough that can be done to preserve these things against the tide of the political elites 
that want to completely dismantle all of our rights and want to basically create a form of totalitarian society? Well, that's a good question. I think the answer to that is probably not. There's probably not a whole lot that can be done to reverse this. There's probably not a whole lot that can be done to preserve what we still have. Maybe we can challenge that as much as we possibly can, but is that really going to be enough? I doubt it. It doesn't look like we're headed in a direction where our rights are going to be preserved. And as I mentioned, you can look at how the vast majority of people are convinced that they should get an experimental pharmaceutical product injected into them multiple times for a disease that probably wasn't going to be a threat to them in the first place unless they were older or had certain health conditions. Look at how many people were convinced that you must do this if you're a good person. And in some cases, you should be forced to do this because we feel safer that way or we feel like that's what you need to do even though there's no logic or reason behind it at all, which again, using reason and thinking in a way that includes the scientific method and it includes supposed enlightened thinking, that's what Western society was built on. And yet, this is what's left of it. What are you trying to conserve from this now, when this clearly is not really the way that people do things anymore? These basic things that you believe in are no longer part of the culture and the institutions that we have to work with, to a large degree. A recent example was one of the Canadian supposedly conservative leadership basically had a picture taken next to someone that had a straight pride t-shirt on and now he's apologizing and saying that he doesn't agree with what the straight pride message was how is that person someone that actually represents conservative values if that person can't tolerate something like straight pride which is really not even something that's worth taking seriously to a large extent anyway why do you have to apologize for that if you yourself have personal conservative values? There is this total lack of congruence between the personal and political conservative person now. These things mean totally different things in some cases. And what I'm basically saying here is I'm not politically conservative anymore. I don't think things can be reformed in a way that brings us back to core bedrock Western values that were responsible for facilitating the success that we had as an entire civilization from basically the 17th century up until this point, right? The Renaissance and the Enlightenment movement and all this, you can go back all the way to the 16th and the 17th century up until now. I don't think we can ever get back to a lot of those values that allowed us to be successful. And you can personally be conservative. I would say that overall that I'm personally conservative. But at the same time, there's not really much of a reason, in my view, to think that conservative political causes are going to work because there's hardly anything left worth conserving at this point beyond a few basic things like basic right to bear arms and free speech. But these things are being taken from you as I speak. So I think the case can at least be made that those with conservative values or approaches in life that are personally conservative, in other words, shouldn't be politically conservative in today's environment by supporting the preservation of a system that is increasingly hostile toward their interests. Again, why are you trying to conserve these things anymore? And so you can make the argument the other way, that we still have something to fight for, but a lot of these so-called conservative political causes are not really very conservative anyway. Just sort of as a brief final point to make, a lot of people in the United States will call members of the Republican Party that don't actually have conservative views anymore rhinos. But the problem with that that I've noticed from a political point of view, right, from analyzing the Republican Party in particular, is that at what point are the rhinos, the Republicans in name only, I should say what that stands for, at what point are the actual conservatives, the rhinos, and those in the Republican Party that just want a different way to take your rights away, that just want to have a different method of tyranny, basically, at what point, when they're the majority of Republican leadership, at what point are they the real Republicans? And the conservatives and the people that actually believe in old school Western values, 
at what point are they Republican in name only because they're actually more libertarian or they're actually true conservatives more or less and the Republican Party doesn't even really embody a conservative movement anymore aside from conserving these institutions and these processes that want to destroy you, that hate you, right? At what point are they just basically useful idiots that think that the Republican Party is going to save them? I mean, isn't that what Trump is about? Didn't Trump largely become president because so much of the other political leadership were so-called rhinos? At what point are the rhinos the majority, even if you want to still give them that label, and the actual conservative-minded people not really represented in the Republican Party anymore? That's just something else to think about along these same lines of what are you trying to conserve at this point in this society? And yes, there is something that's still worth conserving in terms of having basic free speech, basic due process, basic right to bear arms, at least in some places where you still have that. But beyond trying to preserve those few things that remain, I don't think the system is even worth conserving to a large extent anymore. I think it's too far gone, or at least the case can be made that that's the situation at hand. Why support patriotic causes, for example, in a country that is increasingly willing to take your rights away while blaming you for policy failures both domestically and abroad? And by you, I mean personally conservative people. You are seen as the devil, according to mainstream society. So why are you trying to conserve that? Why are you trying to preserve such a system and allow it to continue? Why are you protecting it? And aside from those basic things that I've mentioned that are left, like what's in the U.S. Constitution that we're still clinging to barely in terms of our rights, there's not a whole lot that's left that's worth conserving. And that's why I'm not politically conservative, really. I consider myself a kind of center-right, libertarian-leaning, whatever at this point, but I'm really not conservative. I'm definitely not a traditional conservative. And, you know, you could talk about the marriage institution being corrupted along with all this. Why are you trying to preserve something like marriage as a conservative with a Prager-U type of approach when, again, marriage is dead? It is a corrupt institution that is nothing but a redistribution of wealth where the state gets its cut once the divorce goes through. That's really what marriage has become now. It's become completely corrupted as an institution. And yet conservatives will talk about how marriage is still so important for the fabric and well-being of our society. It's nonsense, right? They're living in a fantasy world. What are you trying to conserve by being politically conservative? You can still be personally conservative, I'd advocate that a lot of those old school ways of doing things can still be quite valuable for you and will allow you to potentially be a better person than you would be without those values. It's certainly better than what we see on the left with all the virtue signaling and pretending like we're better than everybody else and labeling anybody they don't like as a racist or a sexist. But in terms of being politically conservative, I don't see a whole lot of value left in that. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you guys for watching. It's something to consider. I'm not saying you can't vote for a Republican candidate if you think that they have your interests in mind or you just want to vote for somebody that's not a Democrat, for example. But I'm not saying that the alternative is to completely abandon everything. But in terms of really supporting conservative politics, what are you trying to conserve in a society that hates you anyway? Does that really make sense to be politically conservative given how things actually are today and how we're treated like we're not members of society to begin with if we're personally conservative why therefore be politically active in that regard why be politically conservative in a system that is probably beyond redemption in a lot of ways instead of wanting to move towards something else right why are you trying to preserve this system what is there that's left to conserve it's just something to think about I think we have fewer and fewer things that are worth conserving about this society. And honestly, in a lot of cases, we're better off not even trying to be involved in politics, I think. If you still want to be, or you still want to discuss political issues like I do, there's nothing wrong with that. But trying to conserve this system that basically hates your guts at this point for being a conservative person may not be a worthwhile approach.